My name is Wepsody and be very, very quiet. Shh. We're hunting achievement. Uh, let's check out exactly which we have remaining, right? Because it's, it's an ironclad episode. So that means that's what we're going to be doing. Minimalist, ooh, don't know? Who needs relics? All right, well, those are the three that we can achieve with the ironclad. And then we've got Neon up here, Channel 9 Plasma in a single turn. Sure, you can achieve it as the ironclad, technically. But not really. That is to say, you can get Prismatic Shard really early and maybe get really, really lucky on a bunch of copies of Meteor Strike, but it's not gonna... Oh, just do it is the defect. <laughs> All right, pop that off. So first, we'll try and go for Huni's Relics by swapping our opening Relic. Buster Crown. Okay. Uh, gain energy at the start of your turn. Future card wards have two less cards to chew from. All right. Well, it's probably really important that I go to these early shops to try and find myself some aggression. But... This could totally do the achievement. Starting with an energy relic that doesn't have too severe a downside. Uh, it's pretty damn good. Yeah, flame barrier. Yeah, we can play that. Take the money, definitely, especially considering shop in two spaces. Upgrade two random cards. Ooh, hit both defense. And, well, there's the perfected strike. The problem with the perfected strike is that I'm only offered one card per card selection. But... So what? It's 6, uh, 12. It's 12 right now. Plus itself, so it's 14. Upgrades to be 6 more, 20. So should I consider that or should I consider just taking like Carnage and Trench? Because Carnage and Trench gets me a very good aggressive card really early and then a very, very, very powerful defensive card early. Just because I have both of those defends already upgraded and Flame Barrier, I'll hit an upgrade on that Entrench really early. Yeah, I think I do that. Yup. <clears throat> and now Body Slam becomes a really, really viable card for me as well. Okay, so I heal one HP over the... No, I don't heal any HP! Right, I've got... Uh, I changed my opening relic, of course. Okay, so I need to stop relying on healing six HP at the end of each combat, because... <laughs> We're not doing that. Um... Okay. Yeah, I was worried about this. I think I use the... Steroid Potion Triple Strike the Frontliner... Don't want to lose that much HP here. Sure. No, it's not. All right, we'll defend, entrench, strike the frontliner. Then we carnage next turn and flame barrier that gets us fully defended. As well as kills that frontliner for us. Maximum damage in a single turn is 10. And especially considering I have two pre-upgraded copies of... Well, pre-upgraded. Two upgraded copies of defend in the deck as well as the flame barrier we should actually be okay doing this that's a bit more harm than i wanted to take here but it should be okay lethal next turn how likely is it not likely defense next turn is very likely though sweet we're not going to be fighting many elites this floor Art of War! If you don't play any attacks during your turn, gain additional energy next turn. We'll also take a ghostly armor here. Okay, so now we can go for a much more defensive deck and benefit from... <laughs> Muscle memory is an absolute frustration uh, when trying to do this achievement. <laughs> I did it instantly. I invalidated it instantly. Alright, so what, we're going for Minimalist or Udonu here? Should have taken the 20 damage there, actually.
We have a relatively thin deck, so we want to upgrade a card. Brimstone actually probably could be fundamental to a style of deck like this, but I'll just remove a strike, especially because I already have that bash and a strike upgraded. Yeah, I want to go to another shop. Remove another card. See if I can find anything worthwhile early. Potion belt upon pick up game two potion slots. I can't take cards here, right? The only achievement that I can get right now is minimalist. And then after I fail to get minimalist, I can consider whether or not I can feed on Donu. Ooh, Quetstone. All right, we've got a lot of upgraded attacks in the deck already. Sadly, we're not really finding Dropkick, Dual Wield, Flash of Steel, any of those kinds of things. But this is a lot of very early upgraded cards. Quite pleased about the whole thing. Goodbye, Cultist, and hello to nothing. If I just remove enough cards from this deck, then maybe afterwards I can decide my win condition. Not exactly the way that you typically want to do it, but I mean, look, this achievement is going to have to fundamentally change the way that we play. I'm going to take a spot weakness. It's going to be really, really helpful at keeping me alive while I do this whole thing. But more so than that, it's possible that I go like spot weakness, limit break, and then put one more card in the deck and just that's enough for a win as long as I can remove enough cards from the deck. Obviously. I mean, almost the entire deck is already upgraded and we haven't left the first floor. Pretty good. Spot weakness in the opening hand. I know I only have nine cards in the deck and it's more likely to be in my opening hand than not, but still... Oh my god, this spot weakness. I love how it just refuses to not turn up. It is in every hand. Oh my god. <laughs> That's wild as hell. Alright, we can just go super straight for damage here and just kill. So now at this point I have to decide, would I take Reaper? It's a companion to this deck and it'll keep us alive for a significant period of time. So what, this deck is Spot Weakness Reaper, Limit Break. I have to remove five more cards and six more cards if I actually add the... I, I have to do it. Ooh. Ah, oh, that's really cringe and mahinges. All right, Mark of Pain, gain energy at the start of your turn. At the start of combat, shuffle two wounds into your draw pile. Well, if the deck is going to be really, really thin, then that is going to be... Very, very impactful. Which is to say, what, two fifths of my deck? Two fifths of my deck. Two sevenths of my deck uh, is going to be basically unplayable. All right. Uh, also, for all the punters out there who are looking at Pandora's box and going, Rhapsody, don't you know about the save and quit and blah, 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 blah? I do. I'm almost 100% certain it doesn't work anymore. Uh, it was in the game for a significant period of time, and speedrunners abused the evolving hell out of it. It and the Calling Bell had a very similar glitch. Um, but... I remember reading the patch notes when it was patched out the first time and the second time. And I'm pretty sure that speedrunners use an old version of the game so that they can still take advantage of this glitch. I'm not doing that. Uh, I have to take Black Star. It's the only, literally the only option there available for me. Transforming all of my strikes and defense would have been okay if they weren't already all pre-upgraded. They're really valuable as it currently stands. I should probably just hunt elites here to try and make myself stronger. Yeah. So I can get three elites on this floor. It's not that bad. No 
not a huge fan of not having an energy relic when I have to consider the rage in my deck. The rage, sorry. Uh, when I have to consider that I have a reaper in my deck, that's quite high cost. Oh well. I can't add a heavy blade yet. It's too costly. If I get the rise there and I'm not going to save scum to make sure that I don't get the rise there. I'll, I'll talk about saves coming in a moment, but if if I get the ride there, I put myself in a really, really bad position where I have to remove another card from the deck before I get to my minimalist. All right, let's talk about saves coming because I've been accused of it. Uh, and I like to think that I respond fairly uh, maturely to criticism. Uh... And try and be, well, I try and be, I can say that at the very least, uh, relatively even handed with the way that I respond to criticism. That said, I 100% don't agree with any of those comments. Um, save scumming, in my mind, there's not like an official Miriam <laughs> uh, dictionary definition of it, uh, but save scumming, in my mind, is if you renege on an action that you've already taken by, you know, saving and quitting the game and reloading it, so that you can change the outcome of something that you were not yet certain of. That is to say, oh, I made this move, but it didn't work out for me, so instead I'm going to reload the game and do this one. I've literally never done that in the course of the main series. I did it in a modded episode because it prevented a crash, um, but I've literally never done that in the main series. All I've done in the main series is I misclicked or I misordered my cards because I either misclicked or some weird circumstance went on. Like the most recent one was Tools of the Trade drew an extra card. Like I drew my full hand of five and I was choosing which card I wanted to discard. Then Tools of the... Uh, sorry. Yeah, which card I wanted to discard. Then Tools of the Card... Tools of the Trade drew me another card which pushed the card I wanted to discard a little bit further on, I discarded the wrong card and then just immediately reloaded the fight because I was like, this is the first turn. It's the first turn? It was the second turn. I may as well just do that. Like, that clearly wasn't my intention to do. And it's also not a thing that I really debate. That is just the way that I feel about it. If you don't, then fine. Sorry. Defend. That was, that wasn't a misclick. I played that defend because I was like, the enemy's certainly attacking this turn. So of course I'm not going to redo that. Yeah, I always hate to respond to criticism with kind of a like it or lump it attitude, but it, we have a fundamental disagreement about what constitutes save scumming if you consider that to be safe scumming and uh, that's pretty much where that discussion has to end it's not going to get more fruitful past that point i was really hoping that i was going to get lethal this turn that's why i didn't play my strike last turn because i really wanted to get the results of the reaper but the reaper is actually still not even going to heal me up i couldn't just strike and reaper that turn the malleability meant that the enemy was going to kill me if i did that uh, not kill me but i wouldn't you know kill the enemy So it's going to be... Oof. Save the power potion for later. It's going to be pretty vitally important that I get some really big reaper heals soon. Really would like some extra energy because it's... The lack of it is uh, very apparent. We need to start considering all the defensive options as well because looks like we're probably going to lose this fight. Since the enemy has a bunch of armor, I can't just play Reaper for healing. Yeah, 
So this is one of the problems that this deck is going to encounter, right? You can't include that many cards in the deck, but obviously you can't kill second floor enemies with first, well, your basic deck cards. Uh, so do you prioritize aggression or defense? Aggression, right? It has to be aggression, but how do you prevent yourself from being killed by the enemies? Well, you have to kill them before they can kill you, and that deck was not fast enough. If it had the Reaper after the first boss, and especially if it drew a little bit differently in that combat with the spot weakness, and if I played better in the snake fight, we would have had a better chance. But cutting five more cards before that deck ran to the very end was going to be damn near impossible. And winning against bosses, especially with that deck, was going to be actually impossible unless I got a limit break. Runic Cube, whenever you lose HP, draw one card. That's not going to be particularly good for this achievement. Extremely unfortunate for us, but oh well. So I'm Minimalist and one Relic. So I can't take any of these. There are going to be a lot of these runs that otherwise, in normal circumstances, would have been completely promising. That just aren't going to be here. Because I have to worry about all of these extra modifiers. So I will lose a lot of runs that would have... Definitely won, were I not going for achievements. That just has to be accepted. Mm -hmm. And you might think, well, Rhapsody, why don't you just play normally, and if you get the ability to go for an achievement, then go for that. I can't. Not with these two achievements. Minimalist and uh, and Who Needs Relics in particular need you to very, 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 very early on decide that you're going for them because you can take a relic and you immediately are invalidated from the entire run. Yes, there's the possibility of getting the Nloth's event on the second floor. Nloth removes a card from your... De uh, a relic from... No, 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 but he gives you another relic. Never mind, that was never even going to work. All right. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's going to be a problem because include enough cards in the deck and you'll never be able to remove down to five with Minimalist and take another relic and you'll never be able to get who needs relics. You do only need to end the run with one relic, so you can actually replace your starting relic, or you can replace your starting relic with the upgraded version of it from a boss. That's another thing that you can also do. Anger would actually be like a, an unceasing top anger infinite deck. We could do something like that, especially because we don't already have a curse in the deck, but but, 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 but. The problem with that, obviously, is that Unceasing Top is a rare relic. I don't see it that commonly, right? Anger is a common card, so it goes in the other order. You get the Unceasing Top, and then you take Anger. <laughs> There's a Dead Branch, by the way. Dead Branch, Corruption, and then just four skills is really risky. But theoretically, it could do it. taking it. Alright, I'm deciding at this point to start dodging elites. There's a feed that's on sale. Unfortunately, can't afford it. So I'm dodging elites because I don't want the relics. It is... It, for anyone who was around when I did this achievement on my original save file, you'll know that... This is going to be a long and arduous journey of me constantly... Ooh, Searing Blow and then just solely upgrade that. That's... That's a, that's a path to victory. But you'll know that I, I have a reflex of just picking up relics. And it is difficult to ignore. So am I going for Minimalist right now or am I going for one relic? I shouldn't go for both at the same time. I think I go for Minimalist. But if I'm going for Minimalist, why would I take Toxic Egg, right? It pre-upgrades... 
basically nothing? How many cards am I getting included in my deck past this point? I think I'm gonna leave myself no, I shouldn't leave myself open to it. Alright. No, I'm I'm going I'm going for Minimalist. Okay, we actually got a reasonable amount of defense for that turn. I was worried I was basically just going to be out high and dry. <laughs> Armaments. It's pre-upgraded. It goes in a deck with Searing Blow. I play it before I play Searing Blow every single turn. Just upgrade the Searing Blow again. Yes. Uh, okay, so the first most important thing for me to pick up is uh, rests right now so that I can upgrade that Searing Blow. Second most important thing is card removal. Hey, I finally get to make the Armament Searing Blow deck that people have asked for. Not necessarily in the same vein that they asked for it, but it's here nonetheless. Okay, I'll just wait until the enemy's not attacking. Or... Not. Minimalist, can't take any of those. Minimalist is going to be much easier for me to remember at the very least. So I know I've got probably Armament Searing Blow next hand. In fact, definitely, right? Because I was definitely taking damage that turn. So that sorts out my curve. Would really like to have my standard starting relic here instead, though. Deep Breath is actually really interesting. Shuffle your discard pile into your draw pile, draw two cards, right? So Deep Breath and another card that draws a card, that's an infinite. So it would be Deep Breath and Flash of Steel, and you just go Flash of Steel, that draws Deep Breath. You play Deep Breath, that draws Flash of Steel. Cycle, 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 cycle. This deck doesn't work unless I just take every available opportunity to upgrade Searing Blow. It's possible it ends up killing me here, but I have to upgrade the Searing Blow, so oh well. Okay. Save myself 10 block that turn. I wish armaments could upgrade these statuses so they'd just be removed from the deck. Yeah, definitely the best split that I could get. I'll go for the block because it's possible they're both attacking next turn. And they are. I think I went for the block. And thank you, Spike Slime, for not attacking this turn. Any attack in the next tent will split. And that one will kill. None of those. Extra energy is really important, but the inability to gain gold makes it really, really difficult for us to remove cards. Right. So we're probably going to want to just jump back and forth between different card removal locations. We've removed two cards from the deck so far, which means that the cost has been 75, 100, 125 for the next card removal. So I immediately go to the shop. So I need to go between card removals and rests. It's a fairly good path to do that up there on the right side.
Hell yeah. Uh-uh. That's the second armaments, but no. I'd have to remove another card from my deck after this point. That's just not happening. Oh, look, another armaments. I think I might take that. <laughs> I'm kidding, obviously. <laughs> I'm lying for fun. Oh, you had to, right? You had to. Oh, that's awful. What a garbage, garbage fight for me to get after I have the Philosopher's Stone. I'm going to try and avoid taking 20 damage on the first turn. I'd love to have played armaments there, but getting an enemy on the floor dictates. And I must play otherwise. Only really matters if I can put them on the floor right now. Okay. One more on the floor. That frontliner is terrifying right now. Oh well. I'll take my six. And down comes Birdie, Cradle and all. Mm -mm. I probably should stop looking at card rewards. It's not really worth my time right now. Oh, okay. This is actually really good. Uh, I was assuming I was going to have to skip this shot, but no. Take 90, take 90, go to the shop, remove a card. Sweet. Every upgrade has to go on Searing Blow. I've mentioned it before, and I'll mention it again. And just for good measure, probably mention it a couple more times before the episode's out. So I prevent seven damage here, but I incur five by killing the backliner. So I gain the vulnerability on myself. I'm making sure to rethink that before I ever commit to that action due to... <clears throat> circumstances that you might be familiar with if you watched the last episode. I know I'm familiar with them. It literally just happened to me. So I'm still kind of shell-shocked. Literally. Anyway, uh, shelled parasite with... Nope. I was very much hoping I would have... Yeah, searing blow in that hand. Oh well, got it eventually. Thank you. Three more cards still need to be removed from the deck. Oh, and this... There you go. Um, and this deck obviously also has one other thing. Double strike, double defend. Yeah, double strike, double defend. Well, it's not even double strike, double defend. I'm just searing blood double defend. Uh, this deck also has one other problem, which is against uh, fights like this with many targets in. Whew. <laughs> Yikes. We got problems, boss. We have one card that does damage. So we have to just kind of wait until we get it back to play it again. Not great. There's Dropkick, but it's way too late. Sure, can every time you play three attacks in single turn, gain one strength? Sure. Not going to happen commonly, but okay. Yikes. Well, it's definitely armaments and it's possibly d double defend after that, but... 51. The thing is, I get weakened next turn, so my and my vulnerability wears off, right? So my ability to kill the snake plant drastically goes down, which is why I went for that extra strike there early.
I'm obviously not the world's largest fan of the fact that our HP is complete garbage. Doesn't take a brain genius to tell you that. Some sort of rocket genius. I'll take my kill and my dex potion to go, thank you. I'm almost certainly dead in this combat. So 27, 27 would be 13, 13 on top of that's 40, 40 plus 8 is not enough to kill any of these targets on board, which means that, well actually, 7, 7, 18, 18 on top of, well, wait, I was going to have 13, so wait, 18, 45, yeah, still not enough. So if I use a steroid potion, I can get 10 more damage. So 32 and 13 makes 45 again. All right. Um, I need to be able to kill one of these and start working on the next one this turn. I can probably use a poison potion to help me in that. Okay, so I use a steroid potion. Got 14, 46, that is total. So 46 plus 11 means I can kill you with the poison potion and then start buttering up the next one. through this fight. And it looks like we'll be okay. Woo! Took some doing on the first turn, but looks like we get through. I have to rest here, unfortunately. Probably even in the next space, which is gonna kill me overall, but I can't worry about overall. I just have to worry about now. That Searing Blow is never gonna be upgraded enough for this to be good. Especially considering I just skipped those two upgrades so that I don't die immediately as I get into this fight. Alright. So, ah, damn it, it's 32 minutes. I was really hoping I was going to have another attempt after this. At least all the defense in my deck are upgraded. Enemy is going to be split in one more turn. That's actually a really good split, right? Oh, no, it's not. The enemy is applying the frailty and invulnerability. Uh, frailty and vulnerability this turn. Damn it. So we're vulnerable this turn. The enemy is hitting us with 56 incoming damage. I mean, I literally can't kill this turn, so it's just defend, 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 strike, and see if I live. <gasps> On 2 HP. Ooh. That's a miscalculation right there. Probably could have gotten through this turn. Just double defend. Well, double defend armaments upgrades that searing blow strike. The fact that we had basically no relics and not enough upgrades on that searing blow did mean we were definitely going to die next floor, but it could have lived a little longer. 
It's also possible that we got something amazing from that boss fight that would have... Well, boss fight, from the relic after the boss fight, so the boss chest, uh, that could have tried to help us turn this run around. But God, I don't really know what it possibly could have been. Only being able to play one Searing Blow per turn is a bit rough, and not even per turn. I'm really annoyed that I didn't defend there. I'll tell you why I didn't defend is because I figured I was definitely dead again. So I was like, okay, let's just go for the damage then. In the same way that the previous turn I prioritized defend and then aggression. This turn I prioritized aggression then defense. And it didn't work out. That was obviously just like a really, really bad play. I'm not happy about it. At all. Could have lived for an extra turn. Searing Blow only being upgraded three times. Like, literally look at this deck. This wasn't going to win. Even with an Energy Relic. Even with whatever you want to add into the deck. Even with Empty Cage just removing two defends or something like that. This deck was not going to be able to win. Specifically, if it didn't have the Runic Cube, it could have. Because the Runic Cube drawing us extra cards didn't really matter to us at all. Um... But the extra 6 HP that we would have had at the end of every single fight would have kept us alive for a lot longer and would have helped uh, mitigate the result of all of the HP damage I would have taken from not being able to really block because I had to keep cutting those cards from my deck. And not including more powerful block cards. I'm like 98% certain we still would have lost. But on that 2% chance, I'm still really disappointed. In myself, not in the game, in myself entirely, don't worry. For the moment, though, my name has been Rhapsody. The name of the game has been... Trixie. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves, regardless. And hopefully, we'll see you next time.